Now I'm going to start making the journal. I'm planning to make six signatures and each signature I'm going to use three sheets of tea dyed paper, one sheet has the stencil um, image on, the other two sheets are plain tea dyed papers. This is the second signature. Three sheets of tea dyed paper. And for the journal um, Romantic Roses kit, I'm going to use these two sheets as the inside cover for the front and the back. So this is going to be for the front and uh, this one is going to be for the back. And we have six sheets of folded pages. And uh, I'm going to put each one, each of this uh, sheets in uh, one signature. This is these two, uh, six sheets. And for the patterns included in this kit, we have four sheets of pattern paper. Pattern the paper. I'm going to use these for pockets and decorations. And I collected a few pages, ephemer ephemera pages. They are all on both sides image on both sides. This one has a beautiful Paris theater image. This, this one is an old ledger sheet. It's very vintage. This one is also an old ledger seat, uh, sheet. And I find this um, very nice uh, farmer's almanac from 1814. I'm going to use two sheets of this old farmer's almanac. This one has a commercial on the back side. And also, I'm going to use one sheet of this lined notebook paper, very old. I'm going to include all these four, uh, six sheets, one, on, one in each signature. So next, I'm going to fold all these sheets one by one. This is from 
really like these images. They're so Victorian. I'm gonna fold these because these are going to be cut and make pockets. I need to fold these six sheets of image. So I'm gonna fold it this way. So the pocket, when you turn the page, you can see the image on the one side, the other side will be a pocket. I'm gonna use one of these for the flip side pocket. I'm going to make a pocket for each page. Since these are all the same size, I'm going to just fold all of them at one time to save some time. This is a little off, so I need to redo it. I guess they're all off, so I have to redo it. It doesn't have any shortcut. These are six pages here, six pages here, so I'm not, I'm now going to combine all these three um, different papers. This is signature one. I'm going to place this over here on the cover on the outside of this signature. And then place skip two sheets and then place this one here like this. And then place the last one in the middle. This is my preference. You can place all these pages any way you prefer. This is a signature one. Now signature two. I'm going to do the same way as the first one. Outside, skip two sheets and place this ledger sheets in here, and then place the third one in the middle.
So I'm going to put the, before I stitch them together, I'm going to reorder them. This is going to be my first signature. And then this is going to be my second, third, fourth, fifth, and the last one. And uh, I would like to add a sheet of vellum. This is a beautiful sheet of vellum that uh, is from my other, another printable journal kit. I think the kit, the name of that kit is My Beautiful Garden or something. It's This kit is available in my, my Etsy shop. I'm going to add this in the center signature, which is going to be this one. Add this right in the middle because this opens up as a whole sheet. So this is my sixth signature. And also I was thinking I want to make this um, book a little bit more thicker, which is, which what I mean is to have more uh, writable pages available. So I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add more tea dyed paper, one sheet of it, add one sheet tea dyed paper to each signature. Here are four more sheets of tea dyed paper. I already pre filled them. I'm gonna just add one sheet into each signature right in the center. Now the last signature. After this, this book looks thicker and heavier and have more pages to write on. So the total number of pages and tea dyed paper pages, I'm not going to count those decorative papers and uh, ephemera papers. I only count the tea dyed papers. It will be four sheets, which is 16 pages, 16 by six. That's going to be 16. Total of 96 pages, writable. Now, before I start sewing, I, I decide to rearrange the order of the pages. For the first signature, I'm going to keep, keep it the same way. For the second until the fifth, first and last, we'll keep it the same way, but the, for the middle four, uh, four signature, I'm going to place this decor decorative page, page uh, sheets in the middle. I mean, not in the middle, it's 
behind the stenciled tea dyed paper. So it's not going to be the first one. Because when uh, the reason I make this adjustment is because um, no matter what you do, this between these two signatures, you always have some gaps. It may not sometimes you have gap, so I don't want that to cover this um, beautiful pages. So I'm going to re rearrange them. signature remain the same. Now I'm ready to sew them together. One last thing, one last thing I need to do before I sew them together is to round these corners. You don't have to do this, but I prefer the corners are all rounded. Actually, I can do two pages, you know, just do one page at a time. This is going to take a little time, so I am going to do it off the camera. Before I start sewing these signatures together, I need to punch holes on a guide. That way, on um, all signature will be sewn together, same uh, evenly. To do that, I need to make a template. This template has to be the same height as the signature. And this signature measure, the height of this signature measures eight and three eighth inches. So this template is going to be the same, eight and three eighth inches. Now the next thing we need to know is we punch, uh, we make four holes. Must be the even number. So to do that, um, I'm going to leave half inch um, from each edge as the first two holes. To mark the first hole right here, half inch from this edge and the half inch from this edge. These two holes will be my first two holes and uh, minus one inch is going to be seven and three eighth inches left this number is very difficult to divide it by three so what i need to do i'm going to use this uh, waxed thread because it doesn't stretch to measure three uh, seven and eighth, three eighth inches, and then cut it off, and then I'm going to fold this thread like this to find my three holes. Because if you want to measure, the inches is not easy to measure, especially at 3 eighths. 
so this looks about right So I'm going to mark my the rest of my three holes. So I'm going to just cut it off. So this is the distance between two holes. This is going to be my second hole and uh, my third hole. And this is going to be my fourth hole. This to me is very even. Now th four holes are marked. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to punch holes. To do this, I don't have very professional tools to punch holes. So I'm going to use just a book, very old book. This book is, um, thick enough for you to lay flat and also has a little um, kind of groove in the middle so you can place your signatures inside the groove then hold to hold your signatures in place and then you place your template in the middle and I'm using this all to punch holes like this. These are the four holes and do the same thing to all six signatures. Punch it all the way through.
so all of them are punched. Looks so pretty. So next thing I'm going to use this wax thread to sew them together. Because you have so uh, six signatures, so I need at least six times of this length of the notebook. Three, four, five, six, and then you give it give it a little more um lens for flexibility just in case something happens is not long enough i'm going to use this uh curved needle needle to um, bind these signatures i need to put my glasses on Now, before I start sewing these signatures together, um, I noticed that this sheet is a little shorter than the signature uh, main pages. So I basically cannot use this as um, to attach the front cover. So what I need to do, I have these uh, beautiful papers which is 12 by 12 I purchased from um Hobby Lobby a while ago I'm going to use this these two sheets of paper as uh, the paper to attach the front and the back cover so I can cut them the same length as the uh, signature which is eight and three eighth inches long I'm going to just go ahead and cut it a little bit longer. Now the same length as the signature, eight and three eighth inches. And this cardstock I have is going to be um, attached to the front and back cover. And the height is going to be the same as the signature, which is eight and eight three inches. Which is about the same size as the card stock itself, which is Need to cut one eighth of inches off.
and then the width of the signature is five and a half inches so it's basically 11 inches which is the length of the car stop itself so i don't need to cut anything just to score it in the center these two sheets i believe i need to cut because 12 by 12 so it's 11 inches So these four sheets of paper are for, for the covers. Now I'm going to score from the center. Center is five and a half. She's right here. Okay, next thing is to fold them and have them ready. These two sheets is gonna fold this way because these two sheets will, uh, this sheet is gonna attach this front, the cover from the inside like this. And it will go with this first signature like this. So that way it, you're not gonna leave any gap from here. So the first signature, this page, I can fold it back the original way. So you can, as soon as you open the journal, you can see the beautiful image. So I think in the future, this signature, uh, this journal signature size need to be cut the same uh, length as the printout because my laser printer cannot print borderless. So I have to trim the white um, outside the image, the white edges. So the actual page is a little bit smaller than the uncut original letter size. So in the future, when we make journals, we if we use the printable, you if you don't have a borderless printer, which I do have one, but uh, I'm not using that because I like laser printer. These images are all printed with my laser printer. It's if you drop a piece, uh, drop of water on it, it's not going to smudge the image. It's very, very high quality. So.
So um, unfortunately, laser printer cannot print any borderless images. So that's the reason this image print out as um, the size as you can see. So before we tea dye our papers, the best way is to trim a um, half inch off. So when the tea dyed paper is finished, you, it will match the color as the printable exactly. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this instead of my printable, printable sheets to make the cover, to attach the cover, cardstock. This is for the first signature. This is for the cover. And for this cover, um, you don't have to punch holes. But for these two sheets, I do need to punch holes because these are going to be sewn together. Same thing for this image side together. And then I'm going to punch holes these two sheets in these two sheets of paper again use the same method and use my template place these um, place this template in right in the middle And then attach one to the first signature like this and attach the other one to the last signature before that I'm going to fold it back like this Since I moved the signature, I want to make sure the holes are still lined up. Here, they are lined up. Make sure they are lined up. So this is the last signature. Now, after all this is done, looks like this um, hose is a little off. I'm gonna check what happened. I'm gonna just go ahead. I I believe there is a little bit off on this. Uh, if I flip on the, to this side, punch the holes is a little off. Um, not the same as this. Not much difference, just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do? I'm going to line this uh, signature, all these pages uh, up, and then poke the holes directly through. That way, all holes are lined up. Yeah, the problem is the middle ones. Do the same to the last one. 
the end holes are fine. Just need to do the middle two holes. Already. Now these are all lined up. Now I need to, before I start sewing, I need to double check the directions. Make sure it's not upside down. Sometimes that happens before when I make other journals. When I get ready to, uh, when I sew everything together, I notice one of the pages are upside down. So I will have to tear that page off and redo it. So this is fine, this is fine. Okay, they're all looking good. Double check the last one. Looking good. So now I'm ready to sew them together. I need to clean up the mess on my table right now. So many papers. Pieces. I'm going to start from the first signature. I'm going to use this uh, paper clamp, hold these pages together. This needle and the thread is pretty big. So the hole will be enlarged a little bit, but it's not going to affect the strength because later on I'm going to use glue to glue this together. And this end I need to use a little tape to tape it in place so it's not going to move around. Then I will come all the way to the last hole. So this is the top. No, actually this side is the top. Make sure, double check. Because sometimes you forgot about it. And then I'm going to connect the second signature to the first one. Because if you sew many pages together, it has a tendency to shift from the hole we poked earlier. And also this needle is a curved needle. It's, sometimes it doesn't go straight through.
so pull this tight and then poke the needle through the second hole through And then poke the hole back to the first signature. Because we have two holes, make sure I poke the needle in through the right hole, which is this one. Make sure pull the thread a little tighter. And then we need to poke the needle back through this hole, but it's going to occur across this uh, thread. So it will hold that thread in place. You see this thread is it's being held in place right here. And then I'm going to poke the hole, po um, poke the needle back through the second signature, through this hole. This way, I put, I sew these two signatures together. And uh, all signatures will be lined up very e very evenly. It's not going to shift. This is the reason I choose this method to sew my signatures together. Now I'm going to poke the thread in the third through the third hole on the second signature. And now I'm going to poke the needle through the first signature. Across this thread, make sure to do that. Poke it back through the first signature. Each time, pull the thread as tight as you can to reduce the gap that would happen in the future. And then I'm going to poke the thread back through the second signature in the same hole. going to poke the needle through the last hole on the second signature. Then poke the hole back through the first signature. Yes, this is the first signature. And 
and then go through this go under this thread poke through the or the hole the same hole back I like this wax thread, it's bulky, but uh, it doesn't tangle that much. Sometimes you use regular thread, it will tangle on you. And then you have to break the thread and redo everything. So this is first and second signature are sewn together. Now I'm going to sew the third one. I really don't need to, but uh, let me just clamp this together to secure it in case it shifts, pages shifts. So I'm going to poke the needle through the first hole on the next signature. And then go to the next hole. Now, this is the this is the different things we would we're gonna do from what you saw earlier. We need to use this thread, go under this between the first and second signature, go through it like this. Pull it up tight and then poke the needle back to the third signature through the same hole. Pull it tight. So this is the connection between the third signature and the second signature. Then I believe you know what to do. Poke this th needle through the next hole on the third signature and repeat the same thing as we just did. Now this is heavy, I'm gonna take it off. That's the reason I use this uh, C-shaped needle, it's easy to Thread this uh, through the previous connection. Poke it back. And then do the last one. It's a little difficult to maneuver this um, C-shaped needle, but uh, 
it makes it easier to um, pull the needle through the previous uh, knot. Don't forget to go through to do the same thing as we did before. Go through the previous knot. I think this is tight enough. So next I'm gonna connect the next signature. Needle through the first hole. No, don't pick all of them up. Just the third, the fourth one. And go through the second hole. <coughs> Excuse me. Thread the needle through the previous knot. And poke the needle back through the same hole on the third uh, the fourth signature. And then work on the third hole. Repeat the same way. Thread the needle through the previous knot. Pull it tight and then go back to the same hole. And last hole on the fourth signature.
this time I'm going to knock a nod, make a nod here, because I don't think it was tight enough. So I want to ensure this is tight enough. So I'm going to tie a knot on the last one. When I come back to here, I'm going to do the same thing to make sure I don't have a lot of gaps in between signatures. So I'm going to work on the fifth signature now. I think the holes shift a little bit, but it's not really a big deal. So I'm going to just use this all to poke the hole again. Again, go through the second hole. Put the thread a little tight. As tight as you can because it's going to come loose later on and then repeat the same process thread the needle to through the previous knot between two signatures and then thread the needle back to the same hole so slippery today. Go back to the same hole. Make sure to pull the thread tight. And then the last hole. Put the thread tight and now I'm going to make a knot. So this is how it looks like now. You can see a little gap between the two signatures here.
but uh, that's the reason I'm going to use fabric and the glue to glue reinforce this uh, um, sewing stitches here. So now we're going to work on the last signature. Make sure to pull it tight. Go back to the same hole. Go slow through the last one and tie a knot. And do it one more time to finish it up. So that's what it is now. The signatures are all sewn together. This is the other end. Okay, so this is the finished signatures. This page is going to attach to the cardstock like this. And this side of the cardstock is going to attach the cover of the journal. And this side is going to be the same. This side attached the cover and uh, this these two sides glue together. So my next thing to do is to make my cover. 
to do that, I need to measure the the width of the spine in order to decide how big of the spine I need to cut for uh, the cardboard for the spine. It's a little less than a quarter inch. Actually, it is uh, three eighths inches. So I'm going to cut a piece, cut a piece of cardboard, three eighths inches wide for the spine, and one for the front and one for the back. Three pieces of cardboard. <laughs> 